Well, hello everyone. I'm Apostle Charles Perry, and I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel here at Word of Restoration International Church. You know, this channel is our hub for new, fresh, and creative content from every area of the ministry here. We'll have something for everyone in your family, from children to teens, men's ministry, women's ministry, marriages, and so much more. You know, plus the Word of God will always be the glue that keeps us all connected so you can get the Word of God every time you come here to our YouTube channel. Now listen, I want you to make sure you spread the news and share this with your friends and family and coworkers and make sure you subscribe so you can be the first one to always receive from this amazing tool that we have here. Now listen, I wanna thank you uh, for coming to our YouTube channel and I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed. There's something available here that will bless your life. Now listen, I have to go because I want you to start moving through our channel. But remember, we are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you know what I've been saying? Been saying it for 20 years. You shall have double. God bless you. And we love you with the love of God. Next on Restoring Lives broadcast. He will not forsake me. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be dismayed. I mean, when you get that on the inside of you, courage start rising up because you realize you're not by yourself. God is with you. God will not fail you. God will not forsake you. He will not let you down. He will cause you to win. He'll cause you to triumph. Be courageous, praise God. And you got to tell yourself that over and over and over. God is with me. God is with me. It may look like I'm by myself in this interview, but I ain't by myself in this interview. I brought company. I brought, I brought my gang with me. I got, I got angels with me. Come on. I got my posse with me. I, I got the big G with me. I got God. I got God with me. I got Jesus with me. I got the Holy Ghost with me. I got the Word with me. I got angels with me. I am not by myself, and he's not going to fail me. Praise God. know about you but you know things I know I'm, I'm supposed to do or I need to do and, and, and it's time for that courage uh, to come forth because please don't misunderstand me I'm not standing here tonight letting you know every time I need to do something that I just you know it's, it's just you know bam 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 you know gone boom you know I'm the pastor so no I'm telling you that that's some things I'm I know I'm supposed to do and things I need to act on and think I mean I'm, I'm, I'm just like you yeah. some of you <laughs> let me get that straight <laughs> it's getting to get it twisted here. And what I'm saying, I'm just like you in the process. The process is the same for me as it is for you. And so I go through this whole this whole thing just like you. Oh man, boy. Oh. Ooh, Lord. I mean like Jesus. Oh, that's 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 good enough right there. Jesus went through the same thing. He said, Father, look, it's, it's not the dying. Okay, you want me to die? Want me to give my life? I ain't got no problem with that. It's just this cup. I mean, let this cup pack. Can we, can we do it any other way? I don't want to do it like this. And so that's, that's you know, that's, that's just our reality. Where we are, we go through that same process, but at some point, you got to pull your mind together and you got to get your heart together and you got to say, I'm going to act on what God said. We all go through that. So just because you go through that, don't you feel like, you know, you, you fail God? I mean, it's, it's something you go through. But here's my, here's my question. When you finish going through that, what are you going to do? For me, I lay down and, and can't go to sleep because I know I... Uh, and, and, and all it takes, watch this, all it takes is a decision in your heart. Because once I make a decision in my heart, okay, I'm going to do it. I can go to sleep. 
I can go to sleep. But then when you wake up, you got to remember what you said you're going to do. <laughs> you wasn't dreaming. <laughs> now, so let's look at, let's look at courage from a biblical perspective. The lack of courage confines you to four things. The lack of courage confines you. It, it boxes you in, it traps you to four things. Number one, it confines you to your fears. It confines you to your fears. The lack of, when you lack courage, you will be boxed in. You will end up being trapped by your fears. Amen. Amen. The lack of courage. So that's the first thing it does. It locks you into your fears. And so you, you got to live past your fears. Fear comes. And, and when it comes, you, you, you got to have the faith to trust God, to depend on God, not depend on you, but depend on God. Not depend on who said they was going to help me, but depend on God. Because God will never fail me. God will never leave me. God will never forsake me. God is a promise keeper. God won't change his mind. If God said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. He's going to make it good. So, so I have to rid myself of the fear, trusting God. See, perfect love cast out fear. So when you're experiencing fear, you got to put your faith in the love of God. God loves me enough not to let me go down. He loves me enough not to let me go under. He loves me enough to take care of me. He loves me enough to come through for me. And when you are trusting God and have faith in his love, fear leaves you. The second thing that it confines you to it confines you to your frustrations. It confines you to your frustration. It's frustrating seeing what you want and being in a position where you feel like you can never have it. God's not a teaser. He's a pleaser. It's his pleasure to give you the kingdom. So God's not showing you something just to be showing it to you. He's showing it to you, you know, as an appetizer to get your, get your faith in gear and start working on your courage. This is how I think about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, so when God shows you something, there's a reason he exposes you to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you got to just start meditating on that and let, let, it just, let it just get big on the inside of you. The more you focus on a thing, the bigger it gets on the inside of you. And then it gets so big, you'll be carrying it around. Next thing you know, you're ready to deliver. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But your frustrations, nothing like frust being frustrated, you know, having a marriage, being in a marriage relationship and wanting to be happy and you can't find happiness nowhere in the house. Right. You care what room you walk in, just can't find no happiness. You're running into all kind of stuff, can't find no happiness. Looking under the pillows on the couch, I don't know. <laughs> but can't find no happiness nowhere. Can't get none offline. <laughs> Frustration. But the lack of courage, see, you can be frustrated and that lack of courage will keep you right there boxed in yeah. in your frustration. Yeah. And you'll be frustrated today, you'll be frustrated uh, next year, you'll be frustrated 10 years from now about something you should have done 10 years ago. Yeah. Yes. And folk can't figure out what's going on with you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Your psychiatrist won't even see you anymore. <laughs> you know, he, he done with you. Say, look, you frustrating me. Don't you come. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Number three, it confines you to your failures. People of God, we all experience failures in life. But don't get confined to them. Don't get confined to them. You read the autobiography of successful people, you, you, you see all the failures that they went through. All the, all the areas where they fail, but they got back up. You're not a failure until you refuse to get up from where you fail. Amen. And so you can, you can get up and you can begin again. Amen. And then lastly, it, it confines you to your phobias. Your phobias. Phobia, a phobia is a baseless fear. It is a fear with no basis. It is a fear 
either something somebody told you, it, it, really, it really borderlines superstition. It's just some phobia. This, this fear you have that if you, you know, some of you are, are claustrophobic. And you can't, you can't stand to be, you know, you, you, you're challenged with being in a, in a small area. You feel you can't breathe. Now everybody else around you breathing. Everybody else on the elevator breathing. And you sitting there hyperventilating. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everybody else, you know, water two feet. Everybody else out there standing in it. And you, 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 sit, you standing up, patting the water. <laughs> it's a phobia. It's a phobia. And, and, and look what, it, what it's robbing you of. It's robbing you of the enjoyment in the pool. It's robbing you of the comfort and the convenience of riding an elevator versus walking up the steps. Phobias, superstitions, things you've heard other people say. It's, it's, a baseless, it's a baseless fear that motivates you to avoid that particular thing. It could be an object, it, it could be an activity, you know, it, whatever it may be. But you have this, you have this fear. Amen. Amen. And so you have, to, you have to overcome that. You have to overcome. I remember this one thing they, they told us about, you know, when it comes to washing clothes and stuff. You don't wash clothes on certain days. Some of you may know something about that, you, you know, because you'll, you'll wash somebody out of the family. So you got the whole house around here stinking and all these old dirty clothes. I'm looking for something clean to wear. You're talking about washing somebody out of the family. All right. <laughs> you should be at Numbers 21. You should be at Numbers 21. Um, okay, I, I, let, let's skip that. Let's skip, let's skip that one. And let's go to, let's, let's go to Deuteronomy 31. Let's read this one. This will be the only one. Let's read, this will be the last one we'll read tonight. Deuteronomy 31. Um, the Bible said that the children of Israel, God delivered the children of Israel uh, from the Canaanites and destroyed the Canaanites. And, and the Bible said, but they got discouraged because of the way, because of the way God led them. The Bible said he led them by way of the Red Sea and they were discouraged because of the way. The way. Say the way. The way. And, and, and what, what is your way that you have allowed to discourage you? The way. The way, the way they talk to me. The way it was done. The way they, you know, you, you, you're so discouraged, you've, you've neglected to seek employment because the way they let you go on the last job. So now you're discouraged and, and you, just, you just refuse. There's no longer seek. There's no longer desire in you. The way. The way he talked to me. The way the wife did what she did. The way. The way. What, what way are you allowing to discourage you? And well, if they would have just done it this way. Are, are you so sure about that? Could it be that your discouragement is coming from within and not from without? It has nothing at all to do with the way yeah. it was done? Yeah. Yeah. The way. Because one thing you can't control is the way people do things. But you can control the way you respond. Don't let, don't allow the way to discourage you. Don't allow the way to discourage you. Amen? Amen. Now watch this in, in, in oh, let's hurry. Uh, Deuteronomy 31 uh, and verse number 6. Did I tell you 31? Yes. Uh -huh. Look at verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth go with you. The one who doeth, the one who performs, he's going with you. The doer is with you. He said, the one who do it, he go with you. He will not, come on, fail thee, no what? Forsake thee. And Moses called, and, and Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, in the sight of all 
Israel brought him in the presence of the congregation before everyone and what did he say to him be strong and of a what good courage for thou talking to you Joshua for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them thou shalt cause them to inherit now get a hold of this get a hold of it now, now thank God that Joshua did not become discouraged by the way Moses did what he did. The Bible said that Moses called him out before the whole congregation and told him, I need you to be strong and I need you to be very courageous. Now, he could have took the position and attitude and said, well, Moses, you know, I just don't like the way you talk to me. You didn't have to do it in front of the whole congregation. You could have took me in the office and told me that. You didn't have to tell me in front. See, it's the way. It's the way. But you got to suck it up, Joshua. Suck it up, Josh. It's, it's bigger than your little offense right now. You about to miss out on what God trying to do because you getting offended at the way that Moses did what he did. That's what makes him the leader. That's why he's the leader and you're not. But he's trying to bring you up to leadership, but you're too busy getting offended by the way it was done. God's preparing you for something. You had no problem if I honored you in front of everybody. So it's not the in front of the folk that's bothering you. And so, so he says, I need you to be strong and I need you to be very courageous. Look what he said. You, Joshua, will cause Israel to inherit. Mm, that is so good. That Joshua, he, he needs to understand, Israel inheriting has everything to do with your leadership. That's why I need you to be strong. I need you to be very courageous because you can't afford to lack courage because the people's inheritance is dependent upon your leadership. And you cannot be following people that lack courage because if you're following those who lack courage, how in the world they going to lead you to inherit? And another thing, you don't want to just be around folk who just interested in you causing them to inherit and they're not trying to cause you to inherit. He said, Joshua, you shall cause them to inherit. Them getting what God has for them. Them having the blessing of God in their life. Them having what God has promised. As a leader, I am supposed to cause you, put you in a position for you to inherit what God has for you. You're not just here so I can inherit. I'm here so you can inherit. That's right. Amen. Amen. You're not following a leader if they're not helping you inherit. That's right. Not leading you into the blessing of God. But now if I lack courage, if I have no, if I have no, no victory stories, no testimony that I can share with you about how courage is working in my life, how in the world are you going to follow that? He says, you Joshua, you're going to call them to inherit. That's why I called you out and check you in front of everybody. See if you're tough enough. See if you can handle it. He says, you're going to cause them to inherit. And the Lord, see it again, he it is that do it. Go with, go before thee. He will be with you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. Be, uh, he says, fear not, neither be dismayed. 22, Moses therefore wrote this song the same day. He turned it into a song. He wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. He it is that go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Fear not, be dismayed. <laughs> oh, he that go before thee. <laughs> See, that's the song that gets you encouraged. He that go before me. He will not fail me. He is the one that's going to do it. He will not forsake me. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be dismayed. I mean, when you get that on the inside of you, courage starts rising up because you realize you're not by yourself. God is with you. God will not fail you. God will not forsake you. He will not let you down. He will cause you to win. He'll cause you to triumph. Be courageous. Praise God. You got to tell yourself that over and over and over. God is with me. God is with me. It may look like I'm by myself in this interview, but I ain't by myself in this interview. 
I brought company. I brought, I brought my gang with me. I got, I got angels with me. Come on. I got my posse with me. I, I got the big G with me. I got God. I got God with me. I got Jesus with me. I got the Holy Ghost with me. I got the word with me. I got angels with me. I am not by myself and he's not going to fail me. Praise God. See, that'll get you stirred up on the inside. When I was growing up in the hood, I grew up in, I grew up in, in, in Acres Home. And my walk was different when I had my posse with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey man, you ever had somebody want to fight you? And they caught you by yourself. And you know, you kind of talk your way out of it. No, man, I ain't. Come on, man. No, man, it wasn't even like that. Then when, you, then when you got your fellas with you, you say, hey, hey, remember what you said the other day? Yeah, 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 I said it. Yeah, I said, what you gonna do now? So you got your boys with you. When you understand who's with you, that you have, you have unseen help that shows up on the scene to help. Oh my goodness. Unseen help that show up on the scene to help. Come on, say, I have, help. I have unseen help that show up on the scene to help. Let's read this last part so we can finish. Verse 23, he says, and he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, be what? Strong. See, he's saying it again. He's, he's saying it again. Be strong. See, I really believe that he, he really had to build Joshua up. Now, this is Deuteronomy chapter 31. Now, once Moses dies at the end of Deuteronomy in Joshua chapter 1, God comes back and give the same message to Joshua all over again. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, he tell him, be courageous, be very strong. Uh, 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 verse number 6, verse, num verse number 8, uh, verse number 7, he says it. Verse number 9, he says it. Verse 18, he says it. The same message that Moses is giving him, the same thing that Pastor Moses has been telling him. God comes back and reminds him of the same thing. So he says, be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land. You're going to bring them. You're going to lead them. That's why you have to be courageous, because you're going to face things as a leader. Amen. Can I tell you your leadership affects where your children are going? And if they see you, you, you always breaking down, you always fearful, not willing to address and attack situations, issues. Go after things. Don't see that aggressiveness in you. You're going to pass that down to them. He says, you shall bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them. Look what he says again, finally. I'm going to be with you. You ain't, you ain't, I'm not, it's not like I'm sending you and I'm back at the house chilling. He says, I'm, I'm going to be with you. And people of God, wherever you go, you got to realize God is with you. When you go in, you and your wife trying to get that house, not by yourself, God is with you. When you go and fill out that application and trying to get your child into that, that university, that, that trade school, whatever it may be, God is with you. It doesn't matter if it's community college or it's some great university somewhere. God is with you. You go to the bank trying to get that loan. God is with you. He's with you. Wherever you go, wherever you go, God is with you. And, and guess what? Because he's, with, he's not going to fail you. And just because somebody tell you, no, it's not over. They don't have the last word. God got the last word. You tell me no, either I got the wrong person That's right. or I need to just work on my presentation. Yes, That's right. I might need to go upgrade my resume. Mm -hmm. Might need to go get a few things straight, but I, I'll be back. I got that, Schwar that Schwarzenegger on it. I'll be back. <laughs> you can't get rid of me with no no. How you think I got Lady Perry? <laughs> you can't, you can't. No. Oh, I'll be back. Yeah, once she saw me in that Honda Accord. <laughs> I 
with a sunroof top? Shoot, you can't resist that. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Come on, lift your hands for a moment. Lift your hands for a moment. Say, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am courageous and very strong in the face of adversity, in the face of fear, in the face of opposition, in the face of resentment, in the face of adversity, in the face of difficulty, in the face of obstacles. I have courage. God is with me. He will not fail me. He will not forsake me. He is the one that will cause me to overcome. In the name of Jesus, I am strong and very courageous. Now go ahead and give him praise for that because that is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am strong and I am very courageous. Praise God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, eye closed. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If you have been blessed by the teaching of Pastor Perry, come visit us at Word of Restoration International Church. For additional information, please call us at 281-431-5930 or visit our website at www.woric.org. Here at Word of Restoration, we are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you shall have double.